Hello, everyone. Uh, let me just get the clicker here. And yeah, uh, first off, a uh, massive thank you to Mike Tyler, uh, the venue, for being able to host us here. Um, it's always really nice to talk about every single thing that we kind of do here at Railway. Uh, but first, I guess a little bit of introductions and an apology. Um, so everything that's going to be talking about actually was implemented by our, our lead engineer here, Greg Shire, but he's actually uh, building cribs. Uh, he's out on paternity leave. Uh, so you get me. Uh, so sorry about that. But um, everyone at Railway contributes to every piece of the code base. And even uh, a developer like me uh, still actually works on the ClickHouse cluster. Uh, so my official title is success engineer, but I'm just an engineer who talks to people who's allowed to at least leave the desk. Um, and without further ado, um, let's jump into it. So first off, before we jump into uh, kind of explain our use as a ClickHouse, I uh, want to talk a little bit about Railway. Um, Railway is a, a cloud platform that you give us your GitHub repo, and uh, it deploys with logging and scaling out of the box. That's a cue for Andrew to be able to present it, and hopefully it works. If I press share now, it should take over properly. And over here, just like that. All right, it'll be less meta, and then now we have our screen showing. There it is, and that's Railway uh, working as is. Um, so what this does is basically you give us your GitHub repo, and you can push to your repo, and it will automatically deploy. You can scale it, but the most important thing here is that you get this observability view built in for every single deployment that you make on Railway, and I think it's uh, quite cool. Um, the last thing here, I kind of will demo here before I jump back into talk, is that we built a entire log filtering system with the histogram that we just shipped recently. And that means every single one of our queries that we make against our database to give you these logs happen in less than 50 milliseconds. Uh, and that's with all of our users. So right now, Railway uh, currently is serving 600,000 developers, 50K of which are very active. Uh, and uh, I'm able to kind of uh, pester my own infrastructure without pestering uh, our other tenants on the platform. With that said, I think we can jump back right into talk which is a great segue to how we use ClickHouse at Railway. Sweet. So uh, the Railway that you're looking at today uh, is uh, not the really cool, good-looking Railway that you saw on the canvas. When we first launched in 2020, it was nothing more than just building a Docker image, serving it, and then sipping the logs from the Docker daemon to be able to kind of show you those logs. Uh, but it, it didn't really kind of scale past, I think, around when we hit around 50K users. We got to around a million logs a day, but then someone would want to search something really you know, old, and then before you know it, our database would, would not have a great time. So uh, since that broke, we had to start thinking on our feet. Um, Greg and the whole team kind of had to <laughs> deal with a number of outages and incidents related just to our logging infrastructure. So V2 it was. We did later decided to implement Vector, uh, and then link that over to our uh, Docker syslog driver, and then be able to kind of pipe out all of our logs uh, into the file system, and then back that all the way into Google Cloud SQL. Um, this worked actually quite well. It, it scaled uh, really well for our users. We were able to actually get up to a billion logs a day out of the service, um, but the problem was query performance. So as I showed you in a little bit of demo on the railway, um, as I was kind of jumping around through the histogram, I had five services out of a mono repo. And then one of those services was actually ingesting transit data with uh, 20 replicas, uh, just with a click of a button. But the problem is that if I press on that on the old infrastructure, uh, one of those bars in the histogram with one of the filters, uh, it would actually take two, three, four seconds. And that demo would have been uh, really long. <laughs> um, so we had to go back to the drawing board. Um, we started looking into a number of different uh, options into kind of sharding out our database infrastructure. Uh, but then we tried out ClickHouse. Uh, Greg was the one who actually suggested ClickHouse after he saw a number of customer testimonials. And we were like, ah, oh, that doesn't really work. Um, but then we tried it. The cool thing about it was uh, we were able to actually get the um, number of performance that we wanted to when we did move them to ClickHouse. So what we did as a way to prove out ClickHouse was we took uh, 30 terabytes of our existing production logs, copied it over from the file system, uh, threw it over to ClickHouse just for fun, and then actually see the query performance. And it actually did work out pretty well. Um, so we ended up sticking with ClickHouse because of the following. I'm not going to go read all the text, but I'll kind of summarize the, the reasons for our technical decisions there was, namely, the simple queries and being able to get those queries quite fast. But then in the advanced queries, when we wanted to build out our logging infrastructure, um, Railway has a number of uh, the, the key selling point of Railway is that it's actually quite modular, meaning that 
we have a lot of users who only use Railway from the API perspective. So if we want a user to be able to kind of structure a log system, be able to create an alert out of that filtered log, and then run with it, it needs to be get very specific very quickly without any degradation of performance. And then the last thing about it was actually the, the operations of the ClickHouse cluster. So uh, one caveat that I actually neglected to mention before was when we built out the vector system, we actually had to deal with a lot of mm, writing and IOPS issues within the number of hosts as we would scale, um, which would in turn make a number of our hosts kind of panic and then cause some outages, which is again, not great if you're trying to become like production grade infrastructure. So this is why ClickHouse has kind of right now been in, uh, in our system right now for six months and it's, it's going quite well. But what about day two? So we launched, uh, we started announcing our new observability pane around I think four months ago once we started actually writing our stuff over to ClickHouse. Um, and it turns out managing it actually turned out to be a little bit of a non-story. So we have a, two Kubernetes, uh, actually three Kubernetes pods uh, running a combination of Zookeeper and then the actual production ClickHouse. Each of this, by the way, this is like live data. Um, so uh, around probably like, like 43 terabytes worth of compressed log data, and it seemed, seemed to be just going out without a hitch. Uh, we don't necessarily like to run our, our, our databases like you know, up to the top. So we spun up just two uh, replicas actually just recently, two months ago, and most everything's just been staying just fine. Um, since we did, did that, um, we were able to just put it on a Kubernetes operator, change a few variables in Terraform, and then scale just like that. And then in the time since we launched, we went from a billion logs a day over to 1.5 billion. But caveat, we started monetizing logs. So uh, as you can tell, the growth of the logs started uh, becoming a little bit uh, of a plateau once we actually started doing uh, deeper and uh, queries uh, for those systems. What I just mentioned, however, when I, made, when I gave the original abstract of the talk over to Tyler is I actually realized that main, main, maintenance of ClickHouse clusters actually isn't not really super interesting because of how easy it is to manage. But when we did move over to ClickHouse, we were actually able to unlock the next stage of our roadmap onto Railway. So here is a screenshot of our uh, filter system. And on the screenshot, you can kind of see how you can get the relative time, the time range, and then need more than 30 days, the upsell. The problem is that since our old cluster couldn't really query logs from past 30 days long ago, we couldn't actually effectively monetize the logs product quite well. So um, the, the structured logs and the histogram actually are what ClickHouse really enabled us, which I think is the real meat of the talk here. So I'm renaming the talk here from uh, the advanced queries over to how we built a sick interface for querying ClickHouse. <laughs> so. The, the main crux of the issue is that querying structured logs is actually quite hard because on Railway, you can have a company who will deploy 70 unique services on a project and then of those services, will deploy up to 20 plus replicas of each service and then scaling up and down, up and down. And then also having to query whether or not the logs came from a replica that no longer exists anymore. This uh, was not fun when we initially uh, needed to build this from a application developer's per perspective, read me. So, what we ended up doing was we started looking into how we can uh, understand the problem space of like what is a fair filter query and what necessarily isn't that would kind of cause the P99 latency that we wouldn't want. So first is we wanted to be able to make this interface newbie friendly. So we know that everyone here is like really good at Datadog and Datadog queries, like um, I, me less so. But uh, we needed to make this interface that people who aren't necessarily used to infrastructure be able to kind of approach these logs. And then the second thing is we also needed to be able to add and suggest fields and columns. Tiny little tangent here, but most infrastructure software are designed by people who don't really necessarily like to use infrastructure software. And unfortunately, I think are a little bit punishing each other with a little bit of the products that we use. Railway is a little bit different. Our fundamental differentiator is the developer experience. So everything that we build and ship needs to feel good to use. So with that said, we took that over uh, to the back end. So then we built a domain specific language for SQL. Now, a good mentor of mine said, you should never under any circumstances build a DSL on top of SQL, but we did it anyway. So what we ended up doing was for the front end, we started defining what were the tags and queries that we needed to build that we wanted to allow the users to do, and then uh, expose that from the front end first. Then Greg was able to kind of take this back to our Go uh, controller. So the way how Railway works is we have a number of different controllers within the Go back um, backend. And then whenever you query the logs, a gRPC synced connection happens. So by the way, that demo that I showed you was actually a real-time connection with our backend. We need to be able to take in the request from the front end, 
send over that filter object over to the back end, and then build the SQL queries off of those tags that you provided back to us. And then using a, a combination of a number of matchers and uh, kind of formulation, this the, the big magic is kind of up into this uh, format over here where from these a bunch of where clauses. We're actually able to take advantage of ClickHouse's uh, dynamic handling of JSON um, quite well, and then perform the query in 50 milliseconds, which I think is, is quite cool. And basically, our decision to move over to ClickHouse, I think, was very good for in terms of foresight. So when we made this transition over to ClickHouse, we never realized that we can actually enable these types of things in the future. But it was only after kind of looking into uh, the ClickHouse feature set, we were actually like, oh, cool. Like We can actually enable logs past 90 days and then charge for it. You know. Um, and then that was able to kind of lead into our engineer roadmap. And the cool thing now that we can do, that we plan to do, uh, make it so, is that now from people's filters and queries, we actually can now dynamically set up alerts, which is coming soon. So I'm, I'm leaking a little bit of the roadmap. Hopefully, uh, my, my teammates don't get mad at me for that. Uh, so, but yeah, anyway, um, tiny little bit of closing thoughts. We found that um, our technology choices throughout all of Railway kind of bubble up the stack of frustration to our users. And we felt that ClickHouse is really the definition of good DevX design. And by the way, I'm not only saying that because I was invited to speak here about ClickHouse. So I, I, this is my opinion whether or not I gave, got free pizza or not. But it really embodied whether or not uh, about the story, what we, we, I believe to be good design as far by Eric Hu. It, it gives more than it takes. And um, our infrastructure that we adopted, hopefully when anyone uses Railways, people feel like it gives more than it takes. Thank you all.